We play. We fight. We conquer. Welcome back to The Freak Show. I'm your host, Bumpy McSquiggums. We're diving in, folks, and we're continuing with King's Bounty 2. All right, we're in the midst of a town. We just kind of got into our very first battle, and we're kind of learning the basics right now. So it's kind of a go through an adventure, and the tutorial stuff will pop up and teach you the new things that you need to know as you go through. Kind of an interactive tutorial, if you will. And I like that. I'm here for it. All right, obtaining quests. Some characters and items launch new quests. The exclamation symbol marks the location of these characters and items on your compass. All right. I'm here for it. All right, that dude's clearly it's got something no to say. Good. I wish I could find its hands. What? I don't I don't know what that means at all. Like at all. Oh. Oh, the statue. I never even looked at the statue. Well, there we go. I guess we found its hands. It seems that's what I was looking for. Okay. What just happened? Okay. Well, that was weird. Not gonna lie. That was a bit weird. Freezing ray. Ooh, we got a traveling hat. Let's, let's see what we look like. Uh, wayfaring magic. You can find wayfaring magic scrolls and shops and among your tro trophies, your troopies. Uh, these scrolls can either enhance the hero's power for a few battles or add an extra unit to the army. Really? The magic book to the wayfaring magic page and use the scroll. What does that mean? What do you mean you can add an extra troop to the army? Uh huh. Scroll, ice, wayfaring magic. Alright, so we got one of these. Increase the hero's XP for winning battles by 50%, active for three battles. Or. Could do something else. Do, do I want to do. Oh, may, maybe. Oh, well, I guess I've used it. Maybe maybe there are scrolls that will add creatures. It's not like uh, you can do this or this. It's these are the two things. So we get some sort of buff, limited time for battles, or maybe you'll get one that adds a, a unit. I think that's what they're saying there. Cash, we'll take the cash. Or the cachet, if you, if you prefer. A roll of wool. Brass candelabra. All right. It's, you know, it, it's a different perspective. Still kind of doing the same thing you do in in King's Bounty. It, it's it's interesting. It's interesting to see this all from this perspective. Ooh, I found treasure loot. A decoder. Do, do we get to know what any... Oh, did, did I pick it up? I, I clicked and, and then everything disappeared. Oh, cool. We get to see... Our, our guys here. All right, I'd like to maybe get some spells available to me at some point, but for now, I suppose we'll continue walking around doing some stuff. I'm sure they'll throw, here's how you add spells to your list of things that you can do. Oh, altars, 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 altars. There are many altars and places of power in the world of Antara. Each altar increases one of the hero's stats. An altar may be used only once. Move close to an altar, press E to absorb its power. Altars can be found in both remote corners of the land and busy town centers. So look around, and yes, 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 yes. All right, ancient legend. What do we get? Fifty experience. I thought I thought we were gonna get stat upgrades. Oh, well, we hit level two. A talent point is available. Uh huh. Can I battle the squirrels in like uh, Mortal Kombat or something here? Oh, look at those boys. Oh, those boys look super scary. Use the travel steles to fast travel around the world of Antara. Approach stele, press E on the map, choose a different stele as your destination. Only discovered steles can be used for fast travel. Makes sense. We, we hooked it up. There's a horse. Here you are. What's up, big guy? Come on, let's get back into town. We got, we got a dude to go talk to. Can we turn? There we go. Uh, oh, oh, a little bit, a little bit of a, a little bit of jumpiness there. We're just gonna slow, slow walk our way through the tent. No, we're not. You know we're not gonna do that. All right, stay put, horsey. I'll be back. Got places to go, people to condemn to an eternity of fiery torment. You know how we do. 
Anyway, folks, I really hope you guys enjoyed the very first episode, and I really hope you're looking forward to this series as a whole, because, I said, this has been on my mind, on my to-do list, just, like, in the forefront for, well, since the, the announcement two years ago. So, I, I, am, I am so 100% eager for this, and I really thought it'd be a great fit for the channel. So, hopefully you guys agree, and that you've been looking forward to this as well. Okay, trouble, help, yeah, yeah, I'm here. What's up, Lester? Talk to me, buddy. What happened? See what ha happened is. Quickly, come with us. Run. Trouble? I'm a lumberjack. We're nothing but dwarven woodcutters. Honest. Mm -hmm. We cut down trees and send the lumber on to Crucis. The humans have all left the valley. Only us and a few locals remain. Stein is our chief. So then this Lupin, a man from Riggan, arrives at our village. Ah, uh, he was stirring up trouble, trying to recruit the remaining human hunters to join him in his wicked deeds. That seems bad. And Lupin's men seized the village. They captured Stein and are trying to start a fight with the dwarves. Things could easily turn bloody. We took them in purely out of kindness, and this is how they repay us. Disgusting. Help us. Quick, run. <laughs> He's like, we must run. Axes and splinters. All right, so we hit Z to track it. My horse is gone. Hey, did, what were you doing in that house, huh? Do you have some real estate here that I was unaware of? Hmm? Alright, I, I know I probably should not be on the horse, to be honest, but... I'm very curious. Oh, I thought for sure there was a little side path over there. You know what, we're just gonna run along on by, by uh... Just, just on foot. That's another altar that's going to give us some stuff. The power obelisk. Ooh, we got magic power increase. Nice. So why do we have a crossbow if we don't actually physically fight ourselves? Because it increases the stats of all of our characters. I know. I know. It's just one of those things that's always been a little bit strange. Alright, so this is the town, huh? The Lumberjack's house. Oh, that was a big house and multiple buildings, too. What's up, Mark? Uh, everybody look away. I'm going to go over here for no reason. Huh. The story of how Sven, Svenald Big Ear met Dumrazzle and found the Yo, Yoladun Stone Part 2. Well, I don't I don't know what Part 1 is. Well, maybe we'll come back to... It's fine. Svenald rode the bandit horse straight into the town of Ongirborg. Ongir, now that he had enough money to start a business, Svenald didn't need the Jarl's help anymore. However... He was really reluctant to come back home. Besides, the autumn fair was in town. I should go to the fair and buy some cloth from overseas, thought Sveneld. It turned out there was almost no fabric at the fair. But girls, uh, fakirs, and taverns were aplenty. Sveneld had wet his whistle with a pint of ale and met a serpentine uh, fakir who happened to sit at the next table. The Fakir then introduced his beautiful sister, who worked as a maid at the tavern, and she, in turn, introduced her friend. Sveneld shared a couple of pints with the company, and then another pint. The dwarf couldn't remember a thing that happened later that night. He woke up in some hayloft behind the town gates, only wearing his undergarments. His purse was empty, and only one coin and a button left inside. To a side, Sveneld found a jug of water. Perhaps one of the girls felt sorry for him. While he was gulping the water from the jug, a magpie flew by and stole the last remaining coin. And that's how Sveneld lost all the gold he got from the bandits. Yeah. Well, I mean, maybe maybe he should have deposited it in his mattress or a bank or something. I, I'm not real sure. But I know, he went to town to actually spend some cash monies. Uh, you're tied up, aren't you, buddy? Yep, these guys seem all real upset. We gotta talk to the instigators. Don't make the rules around here, Lupin. Look at this guy. Goes around the forest, comes around the forest. Roll, right Lupin. Village simpleton. Did you just call me a simpleton? Enough serving jailers. It's time we made some changes around here. It's time to cut out your filthy Wow. All right, let's go talk to Mark before we start all this. They're they're getting real, real, real upset over there, and I feel like if we don't step in and do something, something bad's about to happen. All right, we could get some angry doggos to join us, and I think that we will. They might not be super happy with us, but I 
feel like we should to totally buy these guys. Yeah, buy the maximum amount. Let's do this thing. We got doggos, we got wolfos. It's good, it's good. All right, the wolves definitely weren't as strong as the dogs, though. Or, well, we had, there were less wolves than dogs. I think the wolves are actually stronger than the dogs. All right, talk to the instigators. I talked to Stein first. In a birch grove one rejoices. Okay. Pine's prayers sung in many voices. But among the spruces, only nooses? You're a human, but you're siding with the dwarves? Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Stein. Substein. Back in my youth, I was a scribe at Marcella. But the city is too noisy for me, too fast. As you can see, I'm looking for peace and quiet now. There's nothing peaceful about this. What's happening here? It's that troublemaker Lupin. He's a criminal on the lamb from Rigern. He's fallen in with Rauld, another Rauld. lowlife and deserter from Crucis. He tried to seize control of the valley. And as you can see, the dwarves didn't take kindly to that idea. I tried to settle things peacefully, but nobody listened to me. I hate to say it, but the snow will be soaked with blood today. Hold on. These ruffians claim they're going to release the prisoners. Of course they do, but think. If Lupin's fellows are able to attack the supply shipments to Crucis, the city will starve. That's not good. Once the dwarves are gone, the firewood goes with them. And who do you think the Warden Valbert is going to deprive of food and heat first? That's His fair. guards or the prisoners? I'll let you figure that one out for yourself. Wow. You're kind of a snarky little, uh... Rude guy there, aren't you? All right, well. You don't make the rules around here, Lupin. What's up, Lupin? Hey, Lupin, look! One of the Crucian prisoners, another victim of Claudius and Valbert. Yeah. Just in time. We need another strong arm right about now. I won't argue about my arm, but why should I help? <laughs> You're human. This concerns you too. These jumped-up dwarf and lumberjacks have it too good. We're living like little lords on handouts from the fort, from that damned Valbert. We local hunters, on the other hand, are being oppressed. Only I, Lupin, can grant any hope of justice. Don't you remember how they treat prisoners? I worked for Valbert myself until I escaped. You'd turn blue if you'd seen what I'd seen. Most of them are rotting alive in there. Not because they're bandits or murderers, mind. Just because they dared say something about the drunkard king. It's not humane. It's not right to take out your hatred for the king on these dwarves. What do you intend to do? We've decided to seize point. Crucis. We're going to starve the fort by cutting off their access to food and fuel. When we triumph, we'll free all the prisoners. Well, the dwarves are against us, so we need to force their hand. Then it will be Valbert's turn to answer for his misdeeds. Yeah. If you're not going to help us, your other option is to spill our blood. Human blood. I'm okay with that. All right, so here we are. Following ideals, many quests can be completed in two different ways. When this is the case, each solution relates to a specific ideal. Power, anarchy, order, or finesse. Which defines a moral choice. Order is the opposite of anarchy, power is the opposite of finesse. Completing a quest in a certain manner increases the hero's corresponding ideal. As time passes, the hero will become committed to one of these belief systems, and at some point they will refuse actions that go against their mature ideals. Well, this is kind of a terrible situation because, well, it's just like the dude over here said, right? He said that they're going to basically starve and freeze the prisoners to the point where they'll die before starving and freezing themselves if they're cut off. So really, you know, maybe it's a good idea, but no, let's talk to Rald. That Valbear will be swinging from a gibbet soon. No, I won't. just know it. That's all you had to say, buddy? Gibbet? Alright. Well. I mean, I could attack the dwarf boys. Ah. Sorry, man. We all about the, the right thing to do here. Alright, we got ourselves what exactly here? We got some brigandes. We got some deserters. And we got some brigandes again. I think we'll be fine. 
Oh, they are not faster than we are. Our wolves are definitely quicker. I don't believe they have any ranged units yet, so we're still good. Um, I'm going to say we move here. We move here. And we move there. Now, I'm going to probably end up waiting with our first two dudes. Yep, wait in defense. See, perfect. Wait delays the turn. Uh, the unit's turn until the end of the round. It cannot be used if the unit is already spent at least one AP. To activate wait, press T. That's a weird, but it's fine. Uh, defense ends the unit's turn for the round, but increases armor and resistance. Use defense if there are no other advantageous actions available to the unit. To activate it, hit space bar. Strange. Alright, so it does look like we can do some stuff with some spells. I think I'm going to do that right now. The Book of Magic contains spells known to the hero as well as any scrolls in their possession. With the spell book open, you can research new spells while not in combat. You'll need to have some mana and appropriate scroll, which can be used up in the process, or which will be used up in the process. You can't learn new spells while in combat. Casting spells consumes mana. The use of scrolls in combat does not deplete mana, but the scroll will disappear forever. Yep. To use a spell, select the scroll or okay, gotcha. I'm all over it. All right, we have two of these. I don't think we've learned any of them, so let's see if we've learned anything from. Okay, we do. This is what it looks like if we learn something actually. Okay, that's good. I like that. Well, we only need one scroll, so let's go ahead and use the Burning Ray. And... What What are these guys? These are the Deserters, the Brigands, and the Brigands. Alright, I'll put it on the Deserters. It looks like it's going to do the most damage to them. Oh, that was so cool looking! Unit skills and hero spells can apply effects to units. Each effect is either a buff or a debuff. Uh, most effects expire after a certain number of turns. Effects can also be removed with the right skills and or spells. The effects applied to a unit are displayed on the unit's detail screen. To view it, hover over and press Y. Got it. So they're burning. Alright, cool. I'm going to say that we are going to wait, which is T and not W, but I understand you want to be able to move with W, A, S, and D. I get it. Did they burn out? They did not. Okay, our spearmen... Ooh. Units with the soldier trait have a zone of control around them. If an enemy unit tries to exit the zone of control, they will be attacked or struck with an uncontested attack. The exiting unit cannot counterattack. Okay, and you can only use a zone of control attack once per round. That is valuable information, good to know. Alright, I'm going in for this one. Boop! That was a pretty even exchange there between our troops. They do seem to have less health overall. The Dogs of War. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull this guy in with the Dogs of War. At least I thought I was. Apparently, no. I'm not going to do that. Oh, no, no. Okay, you attack him back. I thought it said we teleport somebody with that. That's eh, fine. Get that bloody bite on. And they should just drop from this, but we'll, we'll see. Okay, we're going after the deserters with their doggos in the back. Now, we can't actually move from here. If we do, it's going to go bad. So, I believe we just take down the brigand. And he should bleed out. That's my thought. That's my theory. Oh, oh look at that. We, we actually get to go ahead of him. He's been slowed for some reason. I wasn't paying too much attention to... Oh, wait. Wait, the, hold on. Uh, let's take a look. Beast, uh, critical hit, melee. I... Just to do, do. Oh, oh! I I can move now if I wanted to, right? But I can't attack again. So okay, that makes sense. And he bled out. Exactly what I was expecting to have happen. All right, cool, cool, cool. So we could still attack and then move after the fact, which is nice. I, I like that actually. Uh, why didn't our uh, spearmen get anything? Oh, because they didn't get the actual kills, maybe. Hmm. Strange. 
Okay. Well, we got all the stuff. Uh, we're level two. We haven't actually used her or done her level up thing yet either. The forest weeps not when grass is tread. Mankind alone grieves for the dead. The forest teams, here a hare, there an owl, and branches blow. The pines will return after all. You use such beautiful language, Mr. Stein. It's such a shame everything had to end up in a fight. The people of these lands have suffered enough already. It's true. I weep for the hunters. Save it for someone who cares, old man. Wow. As we dwarves say, you can't shore up a tunnel without cutting down a few trees. Now that those troublemakers have been taken care of, our lives will surely get better. Maybe we'll find an ore vein and then start our own mine. Glorious. Oh, you Thank got, you, you got lofty human. goals. I have nothing to repay your kindness, but my uncle lives nearby. He'll reward you handsomely. Please pay him a visit. Sure. All right, axes and splinters is done. All right, we've gone all throughout the the town. We did everything that we could. Hmm. Collect the rewards. What does that mean? Oh, oh, oh! Collect the rewards. Okay. It wants us to go back this way, though. That's interesting. All right, horse. Let's get to it. We have mounted up, and we are on our whoop. A reserve. The hero's army has a maximum of five active units. However, you can keep an unlimited number of units in reserve. Oh, that's nice. Reserve units cannot participate in battle, but can be freely swapped. Uh, but you can freely swap units between the army and your reserve as well as add units to the army from the reserve if there's a particular unit you need. Open the army screen to manage... Okay, I mean, we're not at that point yet, but that's good to know. All right, hold on. They're, they're sending us back this way, right? So my, my immediate question that I was already thinking about but decided to act on retreating and leaving... Is there any reason to stay here? Is there anything that we could do that maybe there's some treasure loot or somebody that we can talk to that might be beneficial to us? Like, who's this dude leaning up against the wagon? Who are you? You are nobody. And we can't go this way because it's log. I is that way. All right. If His Highness wasn't expecting me, I could flee. But alas. All right. But alas. All right, time to hustle. Time to get to where we're going. I mean, we could technically have just teleported, I think. But it's what, Stele to Stele, or just on the map we can do the fast travel? Ah, we'll play around with it. We'll figure it out. I'm not super worried about it. Uh, okay, we're going to go around the other side of the town. Up through here, I believe. I think I missed anything yet. All right, we're gonna get off our horse. I'm gonna walk in. Oh, guess. Who's this then? Ah, it's my nephew Lester's human friend. How do you know that? You helped deal with those angry hunters. I did. Thank you, human. You're welcome. And my thanks to you, hard workers. Lester asked if I could pay you back somehow. Here, take this. It's not a lot, but it's honest money. Good, I appreciate that. Oh, we got some boots. I'm not running around barefoot anymore, right? Is it I? I, yes. Okay, so we got boots. Gives us plus to warfare, plus to health, plus to armor, plus to warfare. Trash can be sold, can be sold. Letter of passage is important. Trash, trash. Okay, just an item for sale. Deer pelt, sale, sale, sale. Okay, that's kind of neat. Our army, our talents. Okay, we haven't actually done this yet. So, I guess these are the things that we currently have and or know. Phantasmal armor, yep, we started with that. Protection, yep. And we can actually upgrade them to additional levels, which is pretty neat. Battle prep preparation, that's uh, plus three to warfare. 
And over here on order, morale penalty for ideal units reduced by one when combined with the units of other ideals. Is that the same thing? Oh, power balance, order balance, okay. Finesse and anarchy. Got to have eight order points, increase our healing effectiveness. Very interesting. Uh, I definitely think I'll be going between power and order. I think that's going to be kind of the two that I would gravitate toward. However, I don't know how viable or useful that will be. Also, according to this, we have four in the order talent tree and none in any of the others. Even though we have stuff over here, it, it's a little confusing, but not too, too bad. Increase uh, experience for winning battles by 10%. I mean, eh. I think I'm going to go with this battle preparation. All right, we have some quests, and then we can see the map as well. Uh, yeah, no, that's fine. I'm going to go check out this book. It's part three. How did I miss part one? As Sven Eld was walking through the forest, sobbing with frustration, he stumbled across the Yoladun stone. Uh, stuck in it was a, or was Tinkalibur? Tinkalibur, excuse me. The mighty Hoden sword. Many brave dwarves tried pulling it out, but none had succeeded. Jarl Sk Skeggy, Iron Hat, had promised a great reward to whoever could bring Tinkalibur to him. Without knowing why, Sveneld yanked the hilt. It didn't move an inch. However, the next thing he saw was the guardian spirit of the sword who seemingly appeared out of thin air. And malicious, malicious and creepy. I'll kill you, insolent. Cried the spirit. In fear, Sveneld fell to his knees and the tin button fell out of his wallet. Suddenly, the guardian spirit had a change of heart. Have you brought me the seal of liberation? Why didn't you say, or just say that? To begin with, mortal, break it with a stone immediately. Set me free. That's weird. Svenel didn't even realize at first that it was his button the spirit was talking about. And when he did, he followed the instructions. To thank Svenel, the spirit allowed him to tank, uh, sorry, to take Tink, Tink Caliber. Ugh, it's a weird, weird phrase. It's fine. Tink Caliber from the stone and so, and only his underpants, but with Tink Caliber on his shoulder, Svenel showed up at the court of Jarl Skeggy. The Jarl was delighted. He gifted Sveneld gold, a uh, caftan, and a stallion, so he could return home as a venerable dwarf and open his own sewing factory. Sure. Sveneld recounted his story to his fellow villagers a bunch of times. In particular, he emphasized that, that had it not been for his love of sewing, he would have certainly thrown away the tin button. Well, there you go. You never know what great treasures you're going to find along the way. Well, oh god, I thought I was going to fall off for a second. I'm like, oh no, I overreached. Horsey, where are you at? Why are you in there with the dwarves? Because you whistled for me and now you were facing that way. It's your fault. It's true. It's true. All right, let's get to it. Now, I didn't look around as much while leaving the prison itself. Or even the town, the initial town. So it's possible that that is where maybe the first part of the book actually was. Alright. So we've done all that. Some little, little bunny rabbits over here. Now we got these guys that are clearly not super thrilled that we exist. Nope, oh, couldn't sneak past them. Look at them. They look very cool. What's up? Is it clobbering time, guys? There's Witchstone, and there are the golems. Where's Rossum? Many quests can be completed with two different ways. Uh, this is the case. Oh, did we already know? Yeah, okay. We, we did this one. Uh, so, see, what happened was... I'm gonna come over here and not do what you want me to do first, so I don't die a horrible death, probably. And then, uh, yeah. The Ruins of New Hope. Hello, friend. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, 
seems dangerous. Anything else I can glean before I do this? I mean, it looks like he left the back door open, so I can just, like, walk through here, right? No? Nothing? Nothing shiny and yellow for me? Can I climb over the wall? No. There we go. Okay. Got ourselves another book. And a chest with some more scrolls and things. Alright, so what we're going to do before we do anything else. We're going to open the book. We're going to go to the scroll of air, or this thing. Yep. And we are going to learn it. And I don't know how to do that. They haven't told us how we can learn spells yet. Oh, it did say it was locked. Oh, Magic of Earth and Ice 1, Arcane Knowledge. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, Magic of Air and Fire 1. We didn't learn any of those things yet. Okay, so if we go to this and we go here... This is where we could learn the extra skills. You know what? I'm gonna... Initial stage, you can read stri Yeah, sure. I'm gonna go with the uh, Magic of Air and Fire. I think that's fine. We probably can't redo uh, Respec again, and I'm fine with that. I'm, I'm totally okay with it. Come on. Please? Magic. There we go. Now we can learn it. Yeah, there it goes. Very nice. And then we could upgrade it more if we wanted to. But we have to have a higher understanding. Okay, that's cool. That's fine. I like all that. Anyway, guys and gals, we'll start off with the book in the next episode. We're going to break it off right here. And, yeah, that's going to do it for right now. Until the very next episode, I've been your host, Bubby McSquiggums. Thank you so much for stopping by the Freak Show. We play, we fight, we conquer.